Errol Spence versus Jordanis Ugas in the very first episode of Boxing Games. Now, what are boxing games? Well, at the lowest level and the highest level, no matter what level, if you've ever been in front of a, an opponent before, uh, someone who's trying to hit you and you guys are similar levels, you're going to realize that there's going to be a game that you're playing with your opponent. And this is one of the ways that we kind of teach Fouts Boxing and teach boxing on Patreon. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, it's 10 bucks to sign up, 10 bucks a month. But these are the little games at whatever level you're at that you play with your opponent to try to find punches to sneak in. Okay. Now, in the most recent example, and one of the most uh, common, commonly known boxing games in boxing is Floyd Mayweather's pull counter. Okay? He likes to find a way to get his weight to the front foot position and draw an attack at him so that he can make this type of attack at you. Again, he's used this very, very similar position, very, very similar move throughout his entire career. As he got better and better, he could play this game with less and less control over the line because of his confidence in landing it. Notice how he approaches the line with his hands down, knowing that he's going to pull and move out of that position after drawing the attack to make his, his version of the pull counter work. Okay? And again, this is a game that he played with his opponent. And as you see, Marcos Maidana here doing the right thing, trying to get his opponent out of the position one, but failing to realize that attacking an opponent on the front foot or attacking an opponent who's in a more dominant position than you uh, is very, very risky, okay? And even though that's a quick jab, people think it's very safe to throw, uh, Mayweather making many, many, many opponents pay for it, interacting with him when he's in that position. And again, this is just one example of a boxing game that fighters will play with their opponents. And this, is, again, was one of Mayweather's favorite games. Um, and he was, to be honest, he would score a couple of rounds with those punches. But ultimately, uh, I believe every single person that Mayweather used this trick on wound up hitting him and, and hurting him. Okay, uh, Marcos Maidana did it all the way down to someone like Carlos Baldemir. Again, these are boxing games. Uh, eventually, because we've all been in front of enough people that we realize when we're being played, right? When someone set something up, when they did something clever, and we're able to make an adjustment so that we can take that game away from them, okay? So, well, now we're going to be taking a look at some of Errol Spence's games. <clears throat> now, Errol Spence fighting a, I'll say in Danny Garcia, a more conventional counterpuncher. Right? So his strategy for fighting him was just a little bit different. Now, how do you fight a counterpuncher? Right? Well, you don't want to just walk into their punches. You don't just want to attack them while they're ready, while they're sitting in their guard, hoping that you cross their line. So when Danny Garcia makes an opportunity to control the space, notice he's trying to circle out this way and cross Errol Spence's line to create some space out here, right? Because the ring is being cut off from him over here. But Errol Spence follows him back with the jab right? Discouraging, right? And interacting with the jab, discouraging him from wanting to throw it so that he can find an opportunity to get him closer to the ropes and throw a big pendulum punch at him, okay? But this is one of the ways that Errol Spence likes to control the distance between his opponent, just put his high guard up, and then attack him on the way back of his line, okay? This is a, a very, very common game for him to play. He did it a lot against uh, Danny Garcia, as we can see here. Danny Garcia shooting that jab out there, probing, and Errol Spence trying to leap over the top of it, getting controlled here, and then Danny Garcia coming out with this jab here, and Errol Spence again trying to follow him back. Now, this is a very, very, very important scene here because he's not anticipating the double jab, okay? Now, that means that this game that he's playing is very susceptible to combination punching, and pull counters, okay? Because he's going to be looking to wait for you to enter the line <clears throat> and then follow you back at a very similar rhythm. So if Ugas can probe and draw Arrow in and pull counter him, maybe he can draw that jab into him and then find a way to counter it with his own boxing game, okay? But again, Arrow Spence... Uh, wanting to be the come forward fighter, but not having the real head movement, not having the, the position one to really take advantage of the fact that, number one, he's a bigger fighter. He's on average, he's stronger than his opponents, mm. but he wants to be the pressure fighter. However, he doesn't really have a front foot position. As we can see, he wants to enter the line here with his weight on the back foot here, control the line, and step with his jab. Again, uh, catching this one, timing Danny, right? and then going over the top of it, same game, right? Just adding a layer of control to it. 
and then again following him back on his line here with this jab here. Now, interestingly, your Dennis Ugas is a counterpuncher, but he's a come forward counterpuncher, but not in the sense of fainting and probing. Right, because he doesn't look to use his hands to control the space very often. Like he does do it a little bit against Manny Pacquiao, <clears throat> but he doesn't really look to use his lead hand. He uses he uh, to control the space and set other punches up. He kind of uses it for balance to find his room for his pull counters or just his regular counters. <clears throat> now again, Errol Spence looking to use that motion to set up this big pendulum step here, get the lead foot dominance, and smack his opponent with a shot like this. Now, a few things to note. For as big as Errol Spence is, right, and I want to say, for all intents and purposes, this almost looks like a position one, right? Now, number one, the way the angling of his foot here, he's not really getting a lot of weight into his front foot. <clears throat> this is not a line here. So I can tell that his weight is not here on this front leg all the way, even though it is, and his head is here. I don't actually think these three tools are actually lined up very well um, if you're looking at it here. But also, we can see that he's not even turning his punch over. He's kind of slapping him with it. Um, this is because normally Errol Spence doesn't really transfer weight to the front foot. Okay, so he's probably driving a lot of the weight from his weight transfer into his foot, but then back out by pushing off with his toes here, okay? not actually catching his weight. Okay? And you can see even him falling off balance a little bit after he throws the punch, right? as he can't really get his weight back to the back foot very well, he kind of falls off, is also indicative of that idea, um, kind of fighting himself. So another very, very important idea, though, um, again, well, Boxing games, right? Boxing games. Now, again, playing the same game, trying to get his opponent out of position here. Same game all the way up until he gets him cut off from the ropes here. Now, what I was going to say before, Errol Spence doesn't really like to have punches thrown at him. Now, spoiler alert, nobody does, okay? But Errol Spence in particular, as we saw in the last sequence, uh, or in the second sequence of the video, that Errol Spence kind of shells up once, once punches start coming at him. Once someone starts throwing punches at him, um, they're able to control the space and control the line, as Errol Spence is not a very good counter puncher on average, uh, unless he gets perfect control of the punch and he, or he gets a really nice slip off, but on average, he's not really a counter puncher unless he's using his jab, okay? But once power punches start coming, he usually kind of shells up. And as we're going to see here, he's going to jab onto uh, Danny Garcia. He's cut the ring off. He thinks he's going to get a free punch. And Danny Garcia catches him with kind of a cross over the top of the head, just a light shot, and is able to come in with this punch here with the right hand to the body and then follow him back with this right hand here, maintaining control of Errol Spence since the moment Errol Spence touches down. Boom, boom. And then Errol Spence tries to pop out. Boom. All of those ideas are very, very important because Ugas is a kind of come-forward counterpuncher, but his hands are always at home. So in theory, he should always be ready to throw a counterpunch. Now, here's uh, Ugas trying to get into position, right, controlling that glove, and Manny Pacquiao super fast attacking him. And Ugas trying to play the same boxing game as Manny Pacquiao, okay? Now, this is a, a game that, that Ugas also plays, but Errol Spence here, uh, not very, not as quick here um, as Manny Pacquiao with the counters, so we don't really see anything coming from uh, Ugas, but there are a lot of opportunities there. Boom, again, excellent counter from Pacquiao, finding a way to get into his line off of that counter, and very important here, Ugas not finding the time to let go of his... Um, his pull counter there, right? Getting pushed into the zone, to the back foot here, but not finding an opportunity. Again, he's usually a back foot counter puncher and is not looking to use his jab here to probe his opponent to draw them in. So this is going to be one of those things that he needs to work on, uh, one of those little boxing games he needs to learn to play. But again, Pacquiao had a lot of success coming in off of Ugas' attacks here. Um, even though on average I don't think um, uh, Ugas did all that poorly, but this is another punch here that I think that uh, is going to be even worse for Ugas in the Spence fight than it was in the Pacquiao fight. I think that um, on the inside, if 
Spence can kind of keep keep control of the engagement on the inside um, or not run off the line or defend his position um, once he gets to the front foot. If he can do that, I think that on average he's going to find this punch to be not only quite effective but be there quite often for him. As we can see, this is the position at which uh, Ugas likes to stand in, right? This is his kind of coming forward position. Again, he's a front foot counter puncher, coming forward counter puncher, whatever that means. So he likes to be no more towards his line, toward the front front part of his line. And here we see him coming in and then pivoting and, tr and rolling and getting his weight stuck on the front foot here. Again, this is a very, very common problem in, in boxing and fighting um, that people pivot on the front foot. And Errol Spence, I think that's the punch that he knocked uh, Sean Porter down with on the inside. So, um, anyway, just some really interesting stuff. Um, I think that this is going to be Errol Spence's most valuable um, boxing game for getting offense off. But it's also going to be the one of the most pivotal places in the fight as... This is also where Ugas looks to start mounting his offense, right? We, use, we saw that Errol Spence was using that technique to get his opponent to the ropes. Is Ugas going to be moving to the ropes, or is he going to be the one coming forward, trying to wrestle? Now, Ugas is not that much bigger than Danny Garcia. I know, nobody wants to hear that, but he's really not. I mean, he's a little bit bigger. But is he as big as Errol Spence? Because Errol Spence is a really big dude for this weight class. Now... Again, both neither of them can move their head very well. Uh, they kind of swing it into their um, respective rear hand attacks, but uh, not really transferring their weight super well. They both have very similar technical flaws um, in their feet and the way that they transfer their weight. But um, yeah, the, I do think that this is going to be one of the places uh, where the fight is won or lost for either fighter. Um, and it's really interesting because normally it's, I mean, sometimes it's in the jab, uh, usually, but usually it's only for one person. Usually only one person is going to lose the fight on the jab like that, like um, Amir Khan, right? The fight was won or lost on his jab, whether he was going to have it countered or not, and against Crawford, right? Um, but it's not usually the case for both fighters, right? So if Ugas can make some offense off of his jab, the one that he's able to draw Errol Spence into the line uh, uh, off of and counter him, maybe with his right hand to the head, um, he may have a good shot at winning this fight. But if he can't, uh, Errol Spence's kind of relentless pressure uh, will very likely be, uh, be too much for him as Errol Spence will gain the advantage in technique uh, because, again, he has pretty decent technique. He's pretty sharp. Um, even though he's not the biggest puncher, he can get a lot of punches off. Um, Ugas can too, so same thing in that regard. But I don't think Ugas is nearly as good with his straight punches um, as Errol Spence is. So uh, I would give him the edge on the outside getting in and then landing that body shot that he's going to be looking for. So anyway... Um, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, and again, this is going to be the first episode of this series, Boxing Games. Now, if you're interested in the full film studies, there are a bunch of film studies on Patreon that we've done on this fight. We watched uh, Ugas fight a couple of... We fought, well, watched him fight Pacquiao, watched him fight Barrio Nueva, uh, watched Errol Spence fight Danny Garcia. Um, yeah, and uh, if you're looking for private coaching yourself... Um, uh, check out my Patreon. It's 50 bucks to sign up, 50 bucks a month, and you will get this level of detail to your own training, your own shadow boxing, your own heavy bag work, double in bag work, speed bag work. Um, and I have drills to teach you how to get better at all of them. Um, and more importantly, I'm very good at figuring out exactly what drills you need to be doing to improve. Okay? Um, there's not a lot of wasted time on Patreon. People grow really quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, also, if you're interested, if you'd like to check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System, include with pad work, uh, shadow boxing school from my Discord, and uh, uh, a few other really, really cool drills, very, very, very unique pendulum boxing drills to teach you to get the most out of your weight transitions, get the most out of your, your training. Um, check it out. in the, the link is in the description. Uh, or if you'd like to check out any of my other 
um, programs. They're still 30% off with promo code 30. Um, or if you'd like a 50% discount on the Fouts Boxing Combat System, you can join my Patreon and I can send you a promo code. Uh, joining my Patreon for um, private coaching also gets you a free double in bag mastery video. Um, that's a $50 value. So anyway, and I'll teach you how to do it. I'll teach you how to do the drills and stuff if you need extra help. But um, really, really, really cool stuff. And um, I think that's all. Yeah, thanks guys.